They said it was beast mode. I can't smell it, like at all. Let's talk about it. What's going on, guys? My name is Neve. Welcome back to Aromatics. Beast mode fragrances, low performing, and even nose blind. Have you ever heard of the term? It's been passed around, but nobody really knows what's going on. They just know that, or they question whether or not they're going nose blind, or is it just dookie performance? There's a lot of variables, and today we're going to describe exactly what is anosmia, and also known as nose blind. So, a little background or history about me is I am a registered respiratory therapist. So, I am a specialist in everything breathing. And in fact, one of the reasons that I specialize in that is because of my love for perfumery. So anosmia is actually a real thing. And there are a lot of biochemical reasons as to why. A lot of perfumers, they know why you can smell something, but I don't think as much as like the biochemistry aspects of it. It actually goes really, really deep, like down to survival, like literally fight or flight. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we go nose blind. This video is not intended to excuse any trash ass performance or low, we're <laughs> low eau de toilette concentrations. Although concentration for the most part can be related or correlated to performance, it's not always the case. Especially nowadays with advancements in technologies and in chemical compounds, we can have some of the lowest concentrations boosted using fixatives. A lot of fragrances for the most part are composed of synthetics and believe it or not, in a lot of cases, synthetics can give you more performance than even naturals. Some naturals giving you more performance depending on their concentrations. We have certain concentrations such as like Oris, you might have Oris concrete, which literally looks like a slab of concrete. And as you go up into concentration, you are gonna get more performance. Now, there are certain notes that seem to go more towards the likelihood of causing this nose blindness. I find that that this isn't really something that's studied. I actually looked at a lot of literature and studies to see. So like I was saying before, I was really interrupted by Fry, but that's okay because Fry is cute, he gets a pass. And uh, there's not much literature or research in regards to which compounds cause more nose blindness. And because it's relatively new, we have a lot of new, uh, you know, fixatives and compounds that are being used like Ambroxin, Ambrostar, Ambrofix, and there's all just fancy names made by different companies of different uh, combinations to make ambergris, basically. And so, Literature wise, there isn't really uh, much, but rather we go off of experience, right? So uh, in my experience and a lot of perfumers experiences, saffron, for instance, some of the saffron compositions is one that tends to go or cause more anosmia. Ambroxin is one that can in some people actually enhance and in some people combination of like Ambroxin and saffron cause nose blindness. But aside from the facts, so there isn't a real clear cut guide that'll tell you you're likely to go nose blind to this you're likely to that but amber wood some synthetics along with saffron have been notoriously known to cause some nose blindness the more volatile the more diffusive the lighter and the airier it is the more likely it is to last less and also be less detected aldehydes for example these are basic compositions that kind of act like a cloud if you will something that's ozonic etc very fleeting in nature along with even believe it or not some oud. one of the most prized oud kinam oud has a very fleeting scent profile a lot of people go nose blind too but the way that it's described is very uh, ozonic light airy musky it's kind of like the aura fragrances so whenever you hear me describe a fragrance such as an aura it just means ozonic musky cloud-like clear but there's something that's very uh, elegant and sophisticated about that and those usually turn out to be some of the best signature scents because you're carrying an aura the downside to all of that although some of those materials are the most complex and sometimes even the most high end is that more likely people are to go nose blind reason is is because it's very consistent in its scent profile and also it's just the way that it is man there isn't like i said back to the you know describing it there isn't a clear-cut guide as to which is which and what's what but let me break down as to why per my expertise and i have a degree you can look it up so the reason we go nose blind is basically your brain farts and it gets tired of smelling the same thing. Now we're gonna get a little bit graphic to kind of describe a little bit of the stuff here to make it make real life sense. There's a reason why they say your own shit don't stink. And one of the most biological explanations is because of the fact that the brain basically uses, so you have an ethmoid bone, your nose bones, all the receptors in the ethmoid uh, are basically their job is to translate these signals into either uh, dopamine, serotonin rush or fight or flight. For instance, if you were to smell cock you are more than likely to get this pungent, nasty smell. Um, and, and in this 
the reason we get this nasty smell is it's your brain's receptor basically recognizing disease. Stay away. Because, you know, feces are known to carry bacteria, E. coli, et cetera, and a bunch of disease. And that's exactly why it smells bad. Now, let's say we were to take the same exact substance. Please forgive me for the graphic, but it, this is going to make sense. Let's take the feces. Let's remove all the bacteria. Let's say there were actually some beneficials to it. Your brain would not detect it as something that smells bad. In fact, it'll smell actually. Okay, let's let's not go there. Let's use another example, shall we? Apple pie. Oh, that smells good, doesn't it? Well, it's because it's nutrient dense. It also has sugars, which the body loves and craves and loves to store fats. And it also has a psychological component. But let's stay for the biological component. The reason is because your body recognizes healthy nutrients. Might not be the healthiest, but you get the idea. And so we smell it as good. Have you ever wondered why beyond just knowing that it smells good? This is the answer. I've always been the type of person to ask why, and this is actually why I've studied it. And in fact, I think that if you become that type of person, you'll find a lot more success in your life. Always ask why. Crave the knowledge and the intention of learning, okay? So, long story short, the reason we recognize foul smells is for our brains, they're basically telling us in one of our senses to get away. The reason why your own feces doesn't smell is because before it's excreted out of your own body, your body recognizes those bacteria, those uh, E. coli, well, hopefully you don't have E. coli, but you get the idea. And for that reason, you're anosmic to your own, unless you ate some like straight up protein shakes and like beans because I, I'm on a daily protein high diet and I smell all of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea, okay? But even then, right, when you stay in a room where somebody defecates or, you know, goes to the bathroom, eventually it shuts off. And it's because your brain turns off these consistent signals that recognizes that, okay, nothing has happened. I've been in this environment. I need to shut this off so that I can recognize other threats. Simple and as barbaric as it sounds, okay? It's very bio chemical the reason as to why we smell things why it's good why it's bad why we stop smelling it why we go nose blind and so does this mean that if you're in the room for example where somebody might have uh, you know uh, went to the restroom that you no longer smell it that nobody else will no they probably will walk in and they'll smell it just as strong as when you initially smelled it now there are some studies but it isn't that many some done in the 2000s and even as as soon as the 2010s as to how fast the brain actually shuts off some of these receptors and it's literally within milliseconds so within seconds you're actually going anosmic to a lot of your fragrances immediately let alone a signature scent within two weeks of constant exposure your exposure or your uh, um, senses is depleted by about 50%. There's only a couple of studies on this one. You can look it up for yourself. The study that I'm referring to is called the psychophysical method for estimating the time course of olfactory rapid adaptation in humans. And this was studied in 2010. Good luck looking that up. But if you really, really want to know some more, in all honesty, these studies are not really going to help you as much as just understanding how the body and the brain works, why you have uh, uh, scent receptors and what their purposes are. So a lot of fragrances, you are more than likely it's inevitable to go nose blind to some notes are just they just are so rugged or so prominent and some fixative have been able to help with going nose blind now is this going to happen for every fragrance no how do we know which one? Honestly, it's all trial and error, and there isn't any definitive answer for that. But there have been throughout trials, throughout courses, notes that are more likely to go nose blind. Something like ISO E Super, something like Ozonic notes, and these are usually just composed of like certain ketones, etc. Something that's pretty light, musky, and has that aura vibe is more than likely to go that way. And notoriously known for doing exactly that is Baccarat Rouge 540. A lot of people go nose blind, but it's absolutely there. For sprays, I can personally smell it on people that wear it the entire freaking day but ask them in an hour and they'll tell you themselves I don't smell it anymore but it's still definitely there your brain has just literally shut it off because it's trying to use more of its uh, resources to distinguish between fight or flight or stay and eat and smell good for example when I used to work at the hospital streptococcus and some other bacteria we could literally smell and identify what disease the person would have based on the fragrance or sorry the scent literally if you're in the medical field i'm sure you can comment down below especially nurses cnas nas all of you guys you know what it's like right you walk by yep these guys strap or you know etc the other thing that i wanted to say that does seem to contribute
to like an easier to go nose blind to is going to be fragrances that don't really have much transition or much of a body and depth in the, in the base, like less ambers, less vanillas, etc. So a fragrance that doesn't really develop, your brain has a constant signal. And so for that reason, you know what's going to happen to save mental resources, it's going to shut it off. Now, if you have a fragrance that's transitioning, you have a really complex top, middle, uh, complex mid and then base, these fragrances are less likely. And for that reason, freshies usually go nose blind too because they're light, they're more consistent, they don't really develop. And a lot of the Oudi Middle Eastern style of scents, you almost never go nose blind too. So hopefully that answers your question. It literally comes down to uh, biologically understanding the whole fight or flight and uh, you know basically rewards of serotonin, dopamine, etc. And finally, to describe why some fragrances like uh, you know apple pie scents versus a pina colada works in different occasions, that's going to come down to psychological relationships between what you do in a certain season versus uh, wearability. So for instance, in the winter time, a lot of people might not find it fit to have a pina colada fragrance, although it'll work in performance and there's absolutely no reason to, it just doesn't really fit, right? Who's outside in the winter time drinking a pina colada? But the reality of it is that you could still wear it. So I'm gonna make another video myth busting a few of these fragrance myths. Make sure to follow, like, and share for more. If you learned anything from this video, all you gotta do is subscribe. My name is Neem, thank you for tuning back in Aromatics and I'll see you in the next one.